Hello again everyone and welcome back. In this video we're going to talk about surface features on bones. So this is equal parts helping you learn a new language and emphasizing how bone growth is really optimized for the structures articulating with it, attaching to it, contained within it, or coursing on its surface. I'm hoping that putting it in categories and telling you why a bump or a groove might be important can help you give help give you context when you're going forward with our study of bones. So following this, I'd like you to be able to describe the terminology associated with bone surface markings and apply that to learning the bones in future lectures. So in this video, you're going to see videos um, within it, but your slides also have picture examples with arrows and outlines that represent what you're seeing in the videos. And if you would like to see the videos again, they are in the larger PowerPoint file up on Canvas. So the first category we're going to tackle are areas of articulation where two bones come together at a joint. So the first set are projections or sticky outy bits. And the second set are depressions that fit these projections. Now projections that form joints have very smooth surfaces. One example are the heads of long bones. These sit more proximal as if the bone is standing upright. Now just below the head, you'll find a narrowed portion called the neck. Here, the head of the rib is where it articulates with the vertebrae. And finally, the fibula is an example of a head that sits proximally but doesn't participate in a joint. Condyles are usually large, rounded processes that are found more distally on long bones like the femur and the humerus. The femoral condyles sit on a divot of the tibial condyles we see here. On a humerus, these have specific names, but they are the two condyles that articulate at the elbow. On the inferior aspect of the skull, we see condyles where the skull meets the vertebrae. And finally, there's a large condyle on the mandible that forms the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. Next, we're going to see examples of the depressions that receive those projections at a joint or an articulation. Facets are a smooth and flat face of a bone. The vertebrae have facets for where they articulate with the bony parts of the vertebrae above and below. I'll note that there is a difference here between the projection, which is part of that bone pointing upward, and the face, or that flat face, the facet on that projection that participates with the joint. On the rib, here is a smooth aspect where the rib meets the vertebrae. Next, a fossa is a shallow depression. Here, this depression is where the mandible comes in contact with the skull to form the TMJ. This fossa on the posterior aspect of the humerus is where the ulna sits when our elbow is straight. And here is the shallow depression of the scapula that forms the shoulder joint with the large head of the humerus. The next set are attachment points, where bone has built up over time with the pull of structures attaching to them. Processes are projections of varying shapes and sizes. 
The mastoid process on the skull is where the muscle of the neck that allows us to look side to side attaches. We'll also see directly in front of it is a styloid process where many muscles and ligaments attach. The mandible has two processes, one that's part of the joint that we saw before, the condyle, and the other where muscles attach that lead to movements at that joint. Here we see the many processes of vertebrae where they meet other vertebrae or where muscles or ligaments attach. On an ulna, we see these points where the big muscles of the arm attach to flex and extend the elbow. There's also this small process on the distal ulna where ligaments attach and it happens to also be called a styloid process. The next term is a protuberance, one we find on the back of the skull where the trapezius, the large muscle of our neck and our back, attaches. Now we'll remember those condyles were smooth projections where joints were formed. Above condyles, we find epicondyles, where muscles and ligaments that support a joint attach. These are the condyles of the humerus, and the bumps above them are the epicondyles, for muscles and ligaments supporting the joint. And we see the same thing here, are the condyles for the femur, and here are the epicondyles on the femur. Now, a more rounded attachment point is called a tubercle on the humerus. We can also see a tubercle on the rib. And on the skull. And what is a tubercle on the humerus is a trochanter on the femur, which is a little bit larger. The next set of attachment points are less of a process and more of a roughened surface. On the radius, the tuberosity is where the biceps muscle attaches. On the tibia is where we find the large quadriceps muscles attaching. And on the hip bone, we find the tuberosities are the sit bones, where you feel when you sit on your hands. The last set of projections are all ridges. The spine of the scapula is a large and palpable ridge on our backs. The linea aspera on the femur is a long line along the back of the femur where many muscles attach. On the hip bone, we have the large iliac crest that you feel if you put your hands on your hips. Now, bony passages allow structures to go through. In the base of the skull, we find many openings for cranial nerves and vasculature. Here's one example for a branch of the trigeminal nerve. And this large hole, the foramen magnum, allows for the passage of the spinal cord. Now here is the biggest foramen in the body, the obturator foramen on the hip bone. On vertebrae in the neck, we see these openings for vertebral arteries that supply the brain. And on the sacrum, we see holes for the sacral spinal nerves. Next is a meatus. Yes, that is how it's pronounced. 
and this is more of a canal or a tube than a simple hole like a foramen. This one here is the external acoustic meatus leading into the ear. And a meatus always reminds me more of a cave. Now canals are more like a tunnel for a train to go through where you can see the other side. Like where the optic nerves pass from the eyes to the brain. Now the last opening is more of an irregular space called a fissure, and in the skull we see that is the superior orbital fissure. These always remind me of a volcanic fissure, like ones you see in movies, like I always think of Aladdin when the ground breaks and the magma shoots up, that is a fissure. The final set are depressions from where a structure is sitting on or courses over bone. Now the skull forms around the brain, so the cranial fossa are a mold of the brain, like we see here. On the humerus, this groove is called a sulcus. You can remember this word from when you were learning about the sulci and gyri of the brain. A groove is a sulcus. The one on the humerus is where the bicep tendon courses between those two bumps or those tubercles to form the intertubercular sulcus. Now here we're going to play a super fun game. So I'd like you to look at the images that are here and the arrows or outlines that show you which structure is being asked about. And I want you to kind of predict or tell me what you would think would be the best word of those answer options here to describe what you're looking at. So just give it a try. And pause so you can take a moment to write them all out. So let's start with this image here on the upper left. We can see what is outlined. We also see on the other side here and here. It's fairly rounded and we see it's an opening. So one thing you can do is then go to the list and look at which ones are openings. So fissure is an opening and foramen is an opening and all the rest are either a depression or a projection. So then you'll think back to what's the difference between a foramen and a fissure. A fissure, again, was more irregular, whereas a foramen was just a rounded opening. So what we're looking at here is a foramen. And the view that we're looking at here is actually of the hard palate from below, and these are the upper teeth. Now let's look at this image below here. So the structure we're looking at kind of outlined here, looks again like an opening. So it's either a fissure or a foramen. So again, is it irregular? Is it more rounded? So this case, we're looking at one that is more irregular. So this is a fissure. Now up here on the upper right, Looking at the scapula, we can see this large outlined area. So the way that this looks, it's more depressed. It's more of an indentation than it is a projection. So we can go over here to our list and think about which of these remaining structures are depressions. So a fossa is a depression. And the remaining are all projections. So what we see here is a fossa. And in this case, a muscle sits within that fossa. Now the last one here is right here on the humerus. So it is not as obvious as some of the others, but what we're seeing is a bump or a projection. So 
So remember, a condyle is a projection, a spine is a projection, and a tuberosity is a projection. So this is the toughest one. We've got three to look at. We've got a condyle, a spine, and a tuberosity. So what we want to think about is, when did we talk about condyle? Well, we talked about the condyle was relating to a joint articulation. So if you think about this being the arm, this is the shoulder, and off the slide is the elbow. So this isn't to do with a joint. It's also not a big rounded structure like condyles. So that one is out. What about a spine? So remember the spine is this large ridge, like the spine of the scapula, what you can feel of your shoulder blades on, your, on the back, what you can see right here on the scapula in this slide. So it's also not a spine. What remains to us is a tuberosity. Remember that this is a little bump and often quite roughened. So we see the rough kind of structure of this tuberosity here. It's where the large deltoid muscle will attach. So as you're going through and learning the different regional anatomy, think about what you're looking at. Think about if you were an anatomist many, many years ago, how might you name this structure? What does it look like to you? Sometimes they look like what they are named after, sometimes not so much, but do what is best for you in terms of figuring out ways to remember these structures and really think about the terminology as you're going forward rather than just rote memorization of these structures. So I hope you enjoyed this super fun game and I thank you for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.